Good morning, evening, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. A with another vlog. This is all of Chapter 3 of the English Colonies. This is a survey of all the information. As always, make sure you are writing notes, and at the end of this vlog that you write down your doobly-doo, the um, questions, or I should say the answers to the questions for this vlog. As always, make sure that you are, uh, you have your name, your period, using full sentences, and that you are actually answering the question to receive full credit because if not no credit for you anyway it's chapter three the english colonies so to start off uh the early colonies have mixed mixed successes uh we had two early english colonies first one was founded by sir walter raleigh he founded virginia and roanoke roanoke island was about 1585 um they mostly relied on native americans and what happened was that the native that uh, Sir Walter Raleigh left Roanoke Island to go get some more help from England. He was he got stuck there over the winter, and when he returned, they found out all the colonists that were uh, that they wanted la that they wanted more land, and they when he showed up that they were dead. They weren't there, and we have no idea why. All that we have is a, a little sketchy on a tree that says Croton. We don't know if that's talking about the Native Americans in the area. They were killed by them. Maybe they moved with them. We have no idea what happened when he returned. Um, so that's this one of our first mysteries of the one of the first English settlements in North America. Then we get the uh, the Plymouth Colony, also known as the Connect B River Colony, also known as Maine. Uh, this started to fail because they started had infighting within the colonists inside the colony itself. And it gets the Native Americans in the area. Uh, and they were unable to actually survive that. Um, and then they had certain ways that you had to finance the colonies. Because most people didn't have enough money to go, I want all this land. I'm going to buy it from the crown. So what happened is first, if you invest in the colony and your colony failed, you lost all of your investment. To help reduce that, they made these things called joint stock companies. Which... Many investors put all their money in one big uh, pile together to back a project or colony. So that if the colony succeeded or failed, you would split the profits and or the losses. So it was less of a risk for you as an individual person. And then you had charter colonies, which was a written col contract issued by government that gives the holder the right to start a colony. So more or less, if uh, George III, who by the way, you know, when the kings of England decides, like, hey, I'm going to give you a charter colony and write to you, you are allowed to have this amount of land for this amount of time, boom, go do it. That's a charter colony. Um, then in 1607, we get Jamestown, which becomes the first permanent English settlement. It's named after James I of England. It was founded by the Virginian Company of London, which was a joint stock company. Make sure you know what I'm talking about. They have a whole bunch of terrible hardships at first. They, they showed up because they were like, oh, we're going to make gold. They thought they would find gold like the Spanish. Um, unfortunately, they found out that it, they were in a swampy area. It was full of malaria and mosquitoes, so it made the colonists sick. They had bad drinking water because they had a tendency to use the restroom on the river that they would take their water from. So don't do that. You don't want to be drinking the water that has urine and fe fecal matter and all that stuff, and it's kind of grody. Um, they started looking for gold, so they did not build houses or farms. So when winter came... It didn't work out very well for them. And the climate was not very uh, suitable for brand new colonists who weren't ready. They had they were, The summers were hot and humid, kind of like it is Florida, and the winter are extremely cold. Um, so Jamestown starts to grow. So John Smith takes over Jamestown in about 1608. He uses the motto, he that, that will not work shall not eat. So if you're too lazy to get off your bum and work and help with the fields, build the build the wall, help build the forts, build a smithy, anything like that, you will not be fed. And it worked worked quite well because people were like, you know what, if I don't get my butt in gear, I'm not going to get fed. It's kind of like life nowadays. If you don't work, you don't try your best, you're probably not going to get what you want. After John Smith, uh, he leaves, Jamestown goes through this idea called the starving time. And what happens is these tensions with the Native Americans started to increase. So they would not help the colonists. The colonists weren't ready at all for this winter. So when James, when John, when John Ralph shows up after John Smith, because John Smith leaves because he gets sick, only six D colonists are left by the time a supply ship, uh, supply ship arrived. 
over 60% of the colony is gone. Then we get John Ralph, and what he does is he shows up on one of the ships, becomes the new governor, and he develops a high-grade tobacco that saved Jamestown from collapsing. They actually stole this from the, uh, the Spanish down in the Caribbean. And what happened, so the colonists wanted part of the profit. And the company allowed them 50 acres if they would actually pay for themselves. So if you pay for yourself to go to America, we'll give you 50 acres of our land so you can make a farm. So, but the problem was because so few people were coming over, they needed additional labor. So what they got was these things called indentured servants. They're not slaves because English did not bring slaves yet. They brought them a little bit later. The indentured servants would sold their labor for a trip to America, and as they worked in the United, in what would become the United States, the in the thirteen colonies, or in uh, British-controlled Canada at the time, they would work for a couple of years, and then they were given their freedom. Unfortunately, what would happen, they weren't given land or anything, or even paid. So, they may have their freedom later, uh, but they are they have a lot of difficulty starting out of life. So, colonists begin to actually start wanting control of their, um, well, their colonies. So, they started, they created what is known as the House of Burgesses. Uh, it was the first representative assembly in the American colonies. It was in 1619. So we have almost 400 years of a representative democracy or a republic in what would become the United States. It is a tradition we've had for quite a long time. Then you get Bacon's Rebellion in 1676. So what ends up happening is all those indigenous servers that we were talking about resented those that had land. They couldn't find land. They had no money. So what ended up happening, a gentleman named Nathaniel Bacon opposes the governor. He's accusing the governor of favoritism towards the rich, high taxes on the poor, and not allowing to the colonists to declare war on Native American tribes to steal their land. So what happens is Bacon and the frontiersmen take over Jamestown and a house of Burgesses, and they burn Jamestown to the ground. Then Bacon falls ill. Some people say he was poisoned. And after that, the rebellion failed. No leader. It will fail. The the kind of the saying goes, you, you know, chop the head off the snake, the body will uh, eventually die, and that's kind of what happened. The governor, though, was recalled of recalled to England because of this mishap, and the House of Burgesses made a uh, resolution to outlaw the use of a royal governor. And already in seven in the 1760s, we're thinking we're already getting closer and closer and closer to becoming independent. Then we get the Mayflower and the Pilgrims. So a pilgrim was a group of people that were separatists, as they, they wanted to separate themselves from the Church of England. They found in the Plymouth Colony in 1620. They sailed on the Mayflower, which was blown off course and accidentally ended up, instead of being in uh, Virginia, they ended up being up in uh, New England in uh, the Massachusetts area. And also they ran out of beer, which is really, really important because you don't want to drink salt water. It's bad for you. Anyway, so the Mayflower Compact uh, was a charter that the men of the uh, the ship actually created that vowed that all that vowed that all of them will obey their laws and established this idea of self-governance. It established the idea that us, the people, know what's best for ourselves and we can govern ourselves when we all obey the laws. Uh, they also had a starving time. But they were saved by two Native, Amer uh, Native Americans named Samoset and Squanto. Um, they actually both could speak English, which really surprised them. It ta they taught the colonists how to grow foods, how to fish, and actually how to survive. They worked as interpreters. And the idea of Thanksgiving comes from this, from this sharing between the pilgrims and the Native Americans. I'll give you a hint, though. It doesn't last very long. And then we get the Puritans. Which was a religious group that wanted to purify the Church of England, also a separatist group, and they found in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Puritans, as I say, were uh, they were religious fundamentalists. They really, really wanted to purify the Church of England. They wanted to get rid of all the splendor, all the rich, and more or less just this is whatever the the holy book, aka the Bible, says is what will happen. Anything else is not allowed. So what happens is this starts what's known as the Great Migration, which all these Puritans started moving to the, to the new colonies in the new world from all around the world. Because they were kicked out of England, because England thought they were crazy. So they moved to Denmark, Germany, Scandinavia, and then when they got their own 
uh, colony, they all they all slowly but surely started migrating this direction. So we do have a very big background in religious fundamentalism, especially the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, they received a, a royal charter, so they were well prepared. They knew they were st they were moving here to stay, and they weren't going to leave. So they did not have a starving time. Uh, we get the New England way out of this, which were certain beliefs of society. Uh, they were hardworking. They believed in going to church, honesty, education, and there was no time for fun and go games. You worked, then you died. And this was a major factor of the growth of the American colonies at the beginning, especially New England, because they were able to concentrate on growing. You have a new, a, some new colonies, C Connecticut, named by Thomas Hooker, Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, which was set a law that limited the powers of the government and allowed non-church members to vote. Underneath the Puritans, only church members could vote. And if you did go to church, they'd either kill you or throw you in jail. Connecticut was like, I, you know, I don't care if you are part of our church or not, you will get to vote. And expands the idea of representative government. New Hampshire is by John Wilwright. Uh, then you get the challenges to the Puritan leaders. Uh, Roger Williams, the First Baptist Church, disagreed with, uh, with forced church attendance. Uh, he was against the force, uh, use of force to grab Native Americans' lands. Land, so he founded Rhode Island that guaranteed freedom of religion and the separation of church and state. So our background in the separation of church and state and uh, religious freedom starts way back in the mid 1600s. And Hutchinson believed that a person does not need a church, a minister, or a Bible to actually worship God. So she ended up having to flee from uh, the Puritans because they actually wanted to kill her, and she also went to Rhode Island. Then you get the Quakers, which I think are one of the coolest groups that we can talk about. They believed that there was an inner light and did not need a church. Believed people should live in harmony and peace. They accepted other religious and ethnic groups, and, and they were actually whipped, imprisoned, and hanged because of their, their beliefs. They ended up fleeing to Rhode Island. R understand the Quakers are so big right now with, with what's going on. That the Quakers, they will totally change a lot of our society, especially the middle colonies, places like Pennsylvania. Uh, then we get to King's Philip War. Uh, so the Puritans and the Wampanoag tribe, led by Menacon, also known as F King Philip, from 1675 to 1776, 1776 over land. I mean, 1676. Yeah. Uh, the Native Americans lost, and most of them were killed or sold into slavery, and their land was taken. All right. Well, I'm going to end here at the New England colonies. We'll start up at the middle colonies on your next vlog. Um, your question will be up at the top of above these vlogs and the questions. And, of course, don't forget to be awesome.